On this episode of Micromatic, we're going to talk about the danger of gas. On an earlier episode of Micromatic, I joked about suffering from gas. And if you're not familiar with the term, gas is a, an acronym for Gear Acquisition Syndrome. Gas is sort of a, a made-up illness that affects photographers where we become obsessed with buying more and more camera gear, whether that's new camera bags or new camera straps or a new lens or a new camera entirely. Gas is something that tends to affect all of us to, to, to some degree, uh, and I've certainly suffered it myself. Um, in this episode of Micromatic, I want to talk a little bit about the danger of gas, uh, but also, you know, potentially some benefit to it. Now, if you've suffered gas yourself, you're probably aware of the first danger of gas, and that's that gas is very expensive. Camera gear is not cheap. An average camera lens can cost anywhere from a couple of hundred bucks up to thousands of dollars if you get really crazy. Uh, and cameras themselves can, you know, can range between hundreds and thousands of dollars themselves. So if you become obsessed with acquiring more and more camera gear, you can end up spending a lot of money and not really realize it. A particular cognitive bias can make the expense of gas even worse, and that's price anchoring. Uh, it is basically a concept that, you know, let's say you are obsessed with a particular Leica lens. You know, this Leica lens is so cool and it is exactly what I want, but it costs $5,000. I don't have $5,000. It's a ridiculous amount of money to spend on a camera lens. So I'm going to settle. I'm going to buy this lens that only costs 500 bucks, right? And it, it, if you put it in those terms, if you become obsessed with camera gear, uh, in this way, you, you can make it feel like 500 bucks is not expensive, but really you pull that 500 bucks out of the context of that conversation right there. 500 bucks is a lot of money. I mean, 500 bucks is a lot of money to me. It's a lot of money to most people. Uh, and so that's it, just an example of how gas can get really, really expensive really fast. And you might not even realize it until you've got a shelf full of camera gear that you're not using and it's cost you a boatload of money. Another risk with gas is that it becomes a distraction from, well, photography, right? Chances are if you got into photography, it's because you like taking pictures. You want to become a better photographer. You want to take better pictures. You like sharing and telling stories. And that's great. If you're on the internet and you're arguing about lens sharpness and which kind of camera system is going to give you the maximum bokeh, uh, if you're obsessed over things that aren't even out yet or available and you're arguing about megapixels, this is all just a distraction from photography. If you had taken all that effort uh, that you might spend on obsessing over camera gear and you direct it toward educating yourself about photography, right? Whether that is just studying photographs that you like and figuring out what it is you like about it. Um, maybe that is spending time practicing your post-processing techniques to really hone in uh, that aspect of your photography or whether it's actually going out and taking pictures Sometimes people do that uh, If you take all that time that you obsess over camera gear and you direct it toward these more productive Activities uh, you can actually advance your photography rather than just kind of going off in this direction of fetishism over camera gear another risk of camera gear obsession is that you might become unsatisfied with your own camera gear. If you've already got a decent camera and a decent lens, you've got everything you need to take pictures. Hell, if you've got an iPhone, you've got everything you need to take better pictures than I ever take. People do it every day, okay? Seriously, any camera kit equipment that you've got is good enough. What you've got right now will allow you to take excellent photos. And obsession over camera gear and acquiring new camera gear can really can make you lose sight of the fact that what you've got right now is good enough and it will allow you to do what you want. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't better camera lenses and better cameras out there and that, you know, in some ways they can't they may be able to benefit your photography. It just means that like don't don't get obsessed with what those new pieces of equipment might do for your photography and might enable you to do. Really what you've got right now will allow you to take pictures and that's, that's what you're in it for. And ultimately, there is no magical camera gear out there. There is no lens or camera that you can add to your camera bag that's going to automatically elevate your photography to the next level. 
I hate to break it to you, but that camera lens that you're obsessing over, like, oh, if only I had that camera lens and I could throw things out of focus and it'd be so much bokeh. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's probably not as good as you think. If you're seeing people out there taking photographs with a certain piece of equipment and those photographs inspire you and you're like, oh, I wanna take pictures just like that. I'll tell you right now, there's a lot more to it than just the equipment, okay? And there's a good chance that the equipment that you have right now is perfectly capable of producing images very similar to the images that you really like. It really comes down to technique and processing. And if you're not advancing those tech, if you're not advancing those aspects of your photography, you're not going to get there even if you get that piece of equipment. I'll give you an example of myself that I went through. So I've got the Olympus 25 millimeter f1.8 prime lens. It's a really good lens. I reviewed it on this channel. Totally recommend it. But you know, in certain situations when I was out late at night with friends, we're at a bar or something, I would take a picture. You know, I'm still end up using uh, uh, ISOs that are really high. It introduces a lot of grain in my photo my photographs um, because you know the lens is an f1.8 lens, so it's pretty good in low light. But there's still limitations, and so I just I just assumed I needed a faster lens, and so I obsessed over the Voigtlander, uh, the Voigtlander 25 millimeter lens on Micro Four Thirds is an f0.95 lens, right? I just thought if I get that f0.95 lens, I'll be able to take those photos that I would have taken with the 20, with the, uh, the Olympus and I won't have to have my ISO so high. I will have beautifully sharp photos, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I ended up buying the lens after months of obsession and it was not the panacea that I was hoping for. You know, when I, when I brought that lens to uh, another nighttime situation, well, okay, my shutter speeds are a little bit better and my ISO is a little bit lower, true, uh, but it wasn't a wild difference, to be honest. And I ended up with a different problem, and that was if I had you know, two or more friends standing next to each other and I had one of them in focus, there was a good chance, unless I lined them up perfectly, there's a good chance that the other friend wasn't in focus. And so now I had another problem, mo light, mo problems, right? So now, all this is not to say that gas can't work to your benefit. You know, there is some benefit to being obsessed with camera gear and buying new camera gear. And primarily, it's about education and educating yourself, okay? And I don't just mean that by suffering through gas, you will learn the things that I just went through, that you'll learn the, the, the problems of gas. I mean, that'll probably happen as well. But really, uh, uh, buying new camera lenses, buying new camera equipment, what it will help you do is it can help you learn about your own preferences. If I didn't go through my own bouts of gas, I probably would have never found out that what I really prefer is medium to short telephoto prime lenses and that I really prefer them when they're manual focus. I would have never figured that out. My first decent camera was a Canon Rebel uh, DSLR with a basic zoom lens. And if that Canon Rebel was the only camera that I had to this day, to be frank, most of the photos I take would still be totally possible with that camera, uh, even though the camera equipment that I've got now is a little bit nicer. Um, you know, but still, like because I went through the, I, because I suffered through gas, I did learn. You know what I like? I like compact cameras. I like mirrorless cameras. I like prime lenses, and I really like prime lenses when they are manual focus. Um, that is what gas has educated me about. Now, a lot of times people will ask me about recommendations for camera gear and I, I try to give them the best advice that I can, but really it comes down to my preferences and I don't know what your preferences are. Your preferences might be completely different. You know, I, I, I recommend the Olympus 25 millimeter f1.8 lens as a really good starting lens, but for a lot of people, I imagine if you got that lens, you're like, ah, it doesn't zoom. How do I zoom? I need to zoom because you prefer zoom lenses and that's totally cool. Like I, I just, I don't prefer zoom lenses, you might. Uh, or even just other people will ask me, should I get the 17 millimeter lens or should I get the 25 millimeter lens? And like, they're very similar lenses. Uh, personally, I prefer the 25 millimeter lens. Uh, I'm gonna recommend the 25 to you as well, but there's a very good chance that you would actually prefer the 17 millimeter lens. And the only way for you to learn that is for you to use those lenses yourself and really figure out which focal lengths you like, which types of hand camera lens and handling do you prefer. That's the kind of stuff that you're gonna figure out for yourself 
by suffering through gas. So if you are going to suffer through gas, try to use gas as an educational experience. Uh, try to, when you are obsessing over the next piece of equipment, try to make it a piece of, of equipment that's going to teach you something about photography or about your own preferences. If you've got a 50 millimeter F1.8 lens, maybe don't obsess over a 50 millimeter F1.4 lens. The difference isn't that big and then really it's not gonna teach you anything. You know, maybe you'll explore a different type of lens that will teach you something new about your own personal preferences. That is where the value in gas is. Uh, another thing to potentially do is to buy with selling in mind. Uh, and what I mean by that is to, when you buy a piece of equipment, maybe buy it refurbished or used. If that piece of equipment ends up not being what you need or just doesn't suit your personal needs, if it's sitting on a shelf unused, if you bought it for a low price, you can turn around and sell it and not have lost a ton of money in the process. And, and that way, you know, if you're buying a lot of camera equipment used and selling it used, you can end up not suffering the expense of gas uh, and benefit from the education of it. Have you suffered your own bouts of gas? Share your experiences in the comments down below. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see other people's perspectives on the folly and the potential value of gear acquisition syndrome. Um, if you like this video, hit the like button down below. It does actually help me out. Uh, and you can subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this. I'll see you in the next episode of Micromatic.